Uh, hello, good afternoon uh, and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Basma Majerbi. Uh, I'm a professor of finance at the School of Business at University of Victoria and I'm very pleased to uh, be here with you today on our second part of People, Planet and the Pandemic where we will focus on our discussion on community recovery resili and resilience through uh, impact investing. Um, I'd like to start, I'm actually in my office right now at the University of Victoria, which is uh, situated on the traditional territories of Lekwungen peoples. And so I'd like to acknowledge that. And I also would like to acknowledge with respect the Songhees, Esquimalt and Sanish people whose traditional uh, relationship with the land continues to this day. Um, joining me today is Ms. Dawn Bowles. Um, I'm absolutely uh, pleased to have her with me on this discussion. I will ask her to introduce herself uh, in a minute, uh, but um, I'd like to say that she has tremendous experience um, on uh, different uh, uh, you know, sides of the ecosystem, of the finance uh, ecosystem, where she's been as an entrepreneur and also as an intermediary and also uh, has experience in uh, uh, accelerating access to impact investment. So uh, today, again, as I mentioned, we will focus our discussion on the role of impact investing uh, for community recovery and resilience post the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, um, I will let you down. So welcome. And uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, hi everyone. Um, yeah, as Basma said, uh, I've had. I'm really glad to be here. I appreciate uh, the work that UVic is doing to get information out about these kinds of topics, um, and appreciate being a guest. So uh, I've got a background in traditional wealth management, starting back just in the 90s through to uh, became interested in socially responsible investing and more ethical types of investing uh, in the 2000s and did a master's at the University of Bath in England because there wasn't anything here uh, looking at responsibility and in investments, uh, responsibility in business practice. Um, thinking I would be a CSR person inside of an organization uh, and what I realized was that uh, the best place for me to take that knowledge was probably back into to the financial system and how to use finance to create more sustainability uh, in various forms. And so that has looked like all kinds of things over the years, as Basma said, um, kind of form agnostic. I just want to make uh, an impact. So uh, whether I have my own organization or I'm working for an impact firm uh, or doing research and work like I'm doing as one piece of my work right now through uh, trying to uh, further this impact investment space, um, it's, it's all my passion. So I'm glad to be here. I'm not a financial advisor. I just want to qualify this. So uh, yeah, I look forward to the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, and we do as well. Uh, so just very quickly before we start, um, uh, we encourage everyone to ask questions using the Q&A window. And we do have uh, just a few polling questions to have a, a little bit of an idea about uh, the level of knowledge in the audience. So Cecilia is going to launch them right now. And you can uh, actually... Um, vote on these questions. Um, you can move the window to the side if it's bothering you because I will not wait for your answers. So my colleague is gonna take care of that. There are three questions in total and we will look at the results and uh, share them with you uh, in, a, in a little while. Uh, just wanted to also remind everyone that the session will be recorded and we will uh, post a copy of the slides um, on our website later on. So please make sure you answer all three questions. All right, so um, before, bear with me here with the multiple windows open. Um, so just want to uh, say a few words before I start. So uh, we started this uh, Uncharted Water uh, webinars um, with the, with the global pandemic and so on. And the, the series is actually designed for, uh, to be accessible to a very general audience. Uh, so with no, uh, you know, the audience, we expect the audience to have different levels of uh, knowledge and expertise. 
um, and um, on any specific topic, but we thought that you know, we wanted to share information about these topics that we thought would offer some um, valuable uh, knowledge to, uh, to our community members. So we do not expect that people here attending today uh, are familiar with impact investing, although those of you who are, hopefully uh, you will also uh, learn something or maybe reflect on the topic from a different perspective and have a chance to ask questions. Um, so in that uh, respect, I'd like to start by, um, so the way this is going to go, I'm going to make a short presentation and I, ha and I have uh, uh, some recent data that I'd like to share. It was just published last uh, week, um, just to set the stage and then clarify a little bit some terms that uh, some members of the audience might not be familiar with. And then I'm going to pass it on to Dawn to uh, do her presentation and talk about some specific examples and so on. So last week it was a different format. Those of you who have been here, we had more of a conversation today. It's more, uh, we have these short presentations and then we'll open it up for uh, Q&A. And as we present, please feel free to type your questions using the Q&A uh, window and we'll take those questions uh, uh, after Dawn's presentation. So let me first start by, you know, uh, trying to clarify a little bit some of these terms. Uh, so Don earlier talked about uh, ethical investing, sustainable investing, you know, different things. Uh, and these terms mean different, you know, different, although not completely unrelated uh, things to different people. If you talk with your financial advisor, for example, they might use terms like uh, responsible investing or sustainable investing or, or ESG investing. So um, let me just take a minute to to clarify a little bit, I like this table, I used it last week, but it gives a little bit of an overview of a spectrum of um, investment strategies going from, uh, you know, completely um, limited or no regard to any other factor uh, besides financials and uh, to all the way where, um, you actually uh, try start to uh, looking at uh, contributing to solutions uh, to environmental and social uh, issues in 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 our community. So um, there are a number of strategies. Uh, people sometimes refer to responsible investing um, or sustainable investing. Um, and this is kind of related, but not exactly the same as what we refer to as impact investing, uh, as you will see later on. Um, typically what, what those investment strategy uh, mean is that uh, there are certain terms. So for example, ESG means environmental, social and, and governance uh, 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 issues are being integrated into the decision analysis when people look at companies to include in their portfolios and so on. They might screen out some companies because they do not meet their standards or they might aggressively or you know positively screen in certain companies not only because of their strong financials but because they think they are performing really well on a social or environmental um, issue. If you move more to, uh, to in the spectrum, you will see that uh, you will probably meet other fund managers or investors who want to be more targeted in their approach and they want to address specific societal challenges, uh, whether in the environment, uh, you know, on society or the environment, while at the same time achieving returns. And again, those returns could vary from you know, high to uh, market level returns to below market level return. So there are you know, a, a, a different um, uh, uh, ways of approaching uh, responsible investing. And, and although we don't really have a clear taxonomy here in Canada, as it is the case in different jurisdictions, like in Europe or other places, um, uh, we are starting to see some uh, definitions emerging uh, with respect to different approaches to responsible investing. Um, so, 
One, one thing that I would like to clarify, uh, because I'm sure those of you who are interested in uh, responsible investing and talking with advisors, uh, you will hear more often people talk about ESG. Again, as I, <coughs> forgive me, uh, mentioned earlier, uh, this refers to environmental, social, and, and governance factor. And I'd like to explain a little bit more the difference here. Uh, because I've got these questions after last uh, time, uh, last week's webinar, and I thought it's it's worth going uh, back and explaining the difference. So when you when people talk about ESG, they are it's a big big bucket that has many many um, factors inside, and I, I'd like to show you some of these factors that uh, investors are looking at as part of their uh, portfolio decision. And they, they are integrating these factors uh, more to various degrees. So some will just look at them while others will actually integrate them into the financial analysis and will, uh, will uh, exclude or include companies based on these criteria. So for example, on the, um, on the, uh, on the social aspect, People look at things like how the company, uh, you know, what is the work safe, uh, workplace safety or human rights or uh, diversity uh, uh, and, for example, systemic racism, like we've seen uh, uh, the protests recently. They look at a bunch of issues. Um, and, and the reason they look at that increasingly, it's because we have evidence from academic studies and, and also, you know, looking at the data that these issues are important and material in the sense that they affect the financial performance of the firm, okay? So it's kind of a risk mitigation uh, strategy. Same thing applies to environmental aspects of the business. Uh, so like, for example, carbon emissions or the pollution or um, water usage and all these kind of uh, things that, uh, uh, you know, are part of the you know, the way the business operates that could affect its financial performance. And we also look at issues like, you know, board diversity, uh, uh, executive compensation, uh, corruption, etc. And these are really important in the sense that, uh, again, I, I will use the term again, they, they are materially important for financial for performance of firms. And that's why you see investors putting a lot of pressure on, on companies to disclose information. Now, this is not an easy task, even if the information is available, because uh, believe it or not, there are so many provider of this type of data and we have scores for firms. So some have high scores low scores uh, globally, like on, on a composite level, as well as on each of these uh, components, the E, the S, and the G. And um, the latest number I've seen is there are like 125 data providers. So if you are a financial analyst or, you know, you're doing portfolio analysis, it becomes really, really difficult to deal with uh, this sea of data. On the other hand, um, uh, impact investing is kind of a little bit different in the sense that it starts with a very strong intention to actually achieve a specific um, uh, outcome or a specific, um, you know, um, uh, desirable um, uh, objective. And so basically, here you're trying to contribute to solution. You're not just trying to mitigate the risk of your of, of your uh, portfolio, but you, you you really want to actually contribute to uh, solutions to environmental and social outcomes, right? And so, you know, you, it starts with the intent, which is important, but there's a whole process also in terms of how do you allocate capital to achieve those uh, desired um, uh, outcomes and, and solutions that you want to contribute to. So it's a more targeted approach to achieve specific social and uh, environmental in, uh, outcomes. Now, how do you do that? Again, there are different approaches, different frameworks and so on. Uh, one, one particular framework that is becoming very, very popular with investors is uh, the framework that is uh, 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 presented by the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so those of you who, may, many of you may have seen this uh, in, in different uh, occasions. Um, these are 17 goals that have been uh, put together by leaders from 193 countries with the UN. 
and um, uh, it's it's supposed to provide um, a, a blueprint for for you know for these big goals that we need to achieve as a society uh, if we want to ensure sustainable futures by 2030. And to achieve these goals, there is a lot of money that is needed to be invested in the uh, uh, in in different areas and sectors, which require contribution from private uh, uh, investors. So um, uh, these goals are also very highly interconnected, uh, which, which means um, that you cannot achieve one or the other. They, they interact with each other. We talked about it last week. I'd like to use this um, wedding cake analogy, which shows how the economy and society are actually related to the biosphere. And so people are paying more attention to how uh, their investments are contributing to these different goals. Now, to give you a, a quick example, um, uh, I mentioned earlier that I will show you some recent data how investors in the impact space are setting goals, measuring uh, their achievements, and also uh, reporting on this achievement, uh, which is uh, something really, really important to, um, but you know, investors are not very comfortable. If, if I invest my money with the fund, then I, they don't report on what is the impact achieved then I'm not really happy uh, as an investor and I don't, I don't know if I achieved my, uh, my uh, outcome or, or impact or not. So you can see that there are many frameworks, again, that's part of the issue in the space and you will see people referring to different frameworks. Um, the, there are frameworks that people use to set the goals. There are frameworks that they uh, allow investors to measure. So there are many metrics, so it's not an easy task. Uh, but there are also frameworks that are used for reporting. And again, it seems like the UN Sustainable Development Goals are increasingly uh, adopted by many impact investors uh, to, to report on the impact to their clients. So finally, uh, in this latest uh, survey, the 2020 GIN survey uh, of investors, again, this is high level before Don gets into more specific examples. You can see that, uh, you know, they surveyed investors around the world that are engaged in impact to see which specific SDGs uh, are they targeting with their uh, investment strategies. And 60% of the respondents said that uh, they actually uh, pursue both social and environmental um, goals. Uh, and you can see that pretty much all the SDGs are being uh, pursued by investors when they uh, define their impact. Uh, you, you know, this is just to show you that the, there are also some, uh, you know, like 34% of investors pursue social goals only, and these are the SDGs that they contribute to, uh, and then others only look at environmental. So I have one last example that I want to show you here, which is, um, um, you know, so I show, so I, I mentioned on average what investors are doing, uh, but this is also influencing um, companies that are seeking funding from investors and also governments as well as cities, for example, municipalities and so on. So this is one example uh, from uh, the city of Toronto, which is uh, um, it's recently launched. Uh, it's still actually in the process of launching a social bond. Um, I have some excerpts from their investor presentation that was done yesterday. And um, uh, because of the pandemic, the city of Toronto estimates that the financial impact is like, at, at the best case scenario will be 1.5 billion, and it could reach to 0.7 billion uh, uh, financial impact if the uh, social distancing continue until the end of the year. So, um, you can see that they actually issue uh, green bonds and social bonds. And in these social bonds, what they are, uh, uh, they are specifically using sustainable development goals. Uh, and that's how they are actually showing the impact. So this particular bond issue, which investors can, you and I can buy these bonds uh, either individually or through our financial institutions. And they are sh showing what sustainable development goals they contribute to. And it goes really uh, granular into different, you know, uh, allocation of the money, how the money is going to be used to which 
project specifically and which SDGs do they contribute to? So this is one example of a reporting to investors uh, to, sh to show how um, the money is being used and which SDGs it is contributing to. And then there would be annual reporting to investors about the achievements. So with this, I'm going to uh, just end it here. And um, maybe before we, uh, I move on uh, with Don, if I can ask Cecilia to show us the results of the poll very quickly. And uh, we can have a quick look. Uh, so the first question, which is, uh, do you think the global pandemic will accelerate or delay uh, progress towards sustainable futures? So that seems to be more optimistic. So that's, that's good. Um, I'm going to show the other ones. As individual, most people, the majority seem to be wanting to have positive impact on people and the planet. And then finally, when it comes to um, impact investing, uh, you can see kind of, you know, this reflects what we were talking about. It means different things to different people. And also um, we have various. So, so Don, would you like to comment on this? Uh, is it surprising? Do you see I any? I love this crowd. This is great. Um, <laughs> I like the positive accelerate where we've got a good number of people. I mean, uh, in general, this is, this is about, um, this is about information, but it's interesting to me how sort of positive and already skewed on this. Uh, some folks are. Um, so that's really great. And uh, hopefully we can fill in some of the gaps for some of you um, that are that aren't sure. Um, and at least you'll have some information uh, to start with. So thanks. No, I'll do that. Thank you, Basma. Um, and also we should just mention that uh, Basma is actually um, shifting the slides. Uh, we're going to be looking after slides. So um, Thank you so much. So that was really good overview. And again, and I was in last week's presentation, which was super interesting with Michael Mann, and he was, it, it was quite a high level. And this is about, um, it was still talking about the same things. So this is just to try and be a little bit more, um, give some specific on the ground examples, uh, and talk a bit about what's going on here. Uh, again, uh, there's, it's vast, there's so much happening. Uh, I have, you know, a, a perspective on a few pieces. I'm not uh, the world expert on this, but I think uh, it's a really interesting time. So um, Basma discussed, um, so this outcomes-based piece uh, where essentially, um, so we're looking at, uh, so you can go ahead and Basma switch the slides. So it's really about um, instead of this uh, taking out negatives, do no evil, reduce uh, impact, pack that way. It's about how do we use capital uh, in different types of forms to fix problems and reduce likelihood of future problems, I guess we can say, in all kinds of areas. Um, and so this space about, uh, and what's interesting is there are charities, uh, so this kind of involves everyone. So there are charities uh, and nonprofits that are starting to do business, uh, and there are businesses that are uh, being created uh, in order to provide produce some kind of an outcome, as uh, Basma used that language, or impact. Um, and so it's this space in the middle here uh, that we're that we're really focused on this convergence of both. We're focused on both these things, but then the place in the middle is quite a happy spot. Um, so this will get us that sustainability and resilience that we're looking for. Um, as a society and it is uh about it's this has been going on for years there are so many people uh working in this space in canada who have been doing so much hard work to get us where we are now um the uk and europe uh so you can go ahead and switch it thanks basma um essentially the uk and europe have been ahead of us uh, that's not unusual they're often the uk has been a leader in these kinds of social finance spaces um and really uh it's growing as we said and this this slide in general it is growing uh uk and europe are in it in advance um this slide in general is interesting in that um well two things i'll go backwards it's it's been recognized, I think, around the world how important this space is. 
And I will throw in, whether we're talking about the high-level ESG or this space in general, I always think when you see mainstream report groups like McKinsey and those kinds of organizations um, starting to talk about this and do reports on this, consultancies, you know that we're starting to hit a, a bit of a tipping point. Uh, but it's still very new. And this particular community investment or impact investment or social finance space again basma alluded to the language uh, that is one of the things that um, we really need to work on it makes it a little more confusing but this piece is is significantly smaller than the rest um, for a few reasons we'll go into uh, but recognized as being so important so um, the government of canada uh, has put a big investment um, basma you can into the Canadian, um, oh, uh, sorry, is back one, yeah. So um, the government of Canada has been working for a number of years on a social finance strategy. And these are, there are folks again in this space, this is not a new space, uh, I'll, I'll give you some examples, but um, there are task force, task force, task forces and uh, other groups that are working together. There's a G8 task force on this. I think it started, I'm going to maybe get, it's like 2008. So we're talking a long time and they've been consulting with stakeholders uh, in, in Canada and internationally um, looking at what others are doing and trying to bring social finance, that blended space uh, into the Canadian context. There's a Canadian strategy um, and we didn't talk about what is social finance versus impact investing, but social finance is sort of a number of pieces. It involves measurement, sort of the whole system that pull this, pulls this together, and then the financial instruments and products that are needed to make these impact investments. Hopefully that's clear. Um, and so that's the strategy has been developed. And uh the social finance within that has been these social impact investing is a key tool and it's also called social finance. So it's really the key here is about mobilizing private capital um, into various ventures, as we will discuss, that are going to generate that public good. Um, and so you can go to the next slide. Um, so the Canadian Social Finance Fund, this was big news. Uh, again, many folks working hard to get to this place. Um, my colleagues, not me, um, but to get to this place of, you know, it's one thing to have a strategy, but you actually need capital <laughs> to execute on the strategy. And so uh, in late November last year, um, there was an announcement that um, the folks, uh, the government was investing this huge amount of money for us, especially for capita, uh, into the space to really build it out. Um, the idea being that it is it is nascent and it needs uh, a number of things. Uh, it's incredibly important, and in order for it to do its job well, it needs um, some uh, it connective tissue is the way I sort of call it, but really investment into various places. And I liken it to um, in the innovation and sort of knowledge economy about 10 years ago in Canada, there was a big investment into things like accelerators, uh, venture capital funds. And this isn't exactly the same thing, but if you think about it in that context, we're really about to sort of uh, bring the game up here uh, with this investment. So for the sake of the Canadian Social Finance Fund, the, uh, there are two pieces. One has actually been deployed uh, now, starting late last year. Um, investment readiness, don't let the name fool you. It is really about uh, helping all the different parties, whether they're for-profit, uh, um, mission-based for-profits or non-profits uh, operating on that other side to start to build their capacity and ability to flow uh, capital in an effective way. So we wanna make sure if the government's investing this money and we're bringing in, uh, impact investors in, that um, the space is well built and resilient. Uh, so it's about building that marketplace. So that's happening now. And part of the uh, piece of work I'm doing is connected to that first um, uh, investment readiness program. 
there was some talk about with COVID, you know, is how relevant is this? Um, and I think what we've realized is there's a light been shone on it that it's more relevant than ever. Um, we know how important our community organizations are and we can see them in action and how critical um, this has been for, for the resilience, uh, res recovery and resilience of our communities. So for the sake of this fund also, just to say, uh, and the government, they've really used a broad term. Again, it says community organization, social purpose, uh, but this includes everything from um, nonprofits, co-ops through to hybrid type organizations. And it includes all the theme thematic areas. They use social, but that would be environmental and things like financial equality. Um, so this is, this is really about building this uh, marketplace. And I just want to say um, before we flip to the next slide that uh, don't assume th there are so many players already in the space. Um, so, it's not that it doesn't exist, but it's it's not been as visible as it could be. And so I'm going to switch to the next uh, slide and talk a bit about, um, I switched these around a little bit, sorry, Basil, but some investment types. So just to give you, to bring it back down to sort of what does this stuff look like? Um, what does it look like now? And then uh, I haven't got examples of the future, but the other piece I should say about this whole space is the idea is uh, the word innovation. So there are existing impact investments, and that's what I want to talk about that you could you could access now or recently, depending on your level of investment. Um, and the goal is that there will be innovation in this space to create other forms of investment that also enable funds to flow to those ventures. So some quick examples, I can't go through all these, you're going to rec and this is just a fraction of the many things going on. Uh, Basma gave a good example at the beginning around the bond uh, in Toronto. Um, so I always plug credit unions because, uh, you know, they're kind of, it's forgotten, but not forgotten, but it's, I think, overlooked as an impact investment. But at the very least, uh, joining a credit union is a community banking institution. Um, and the funds that are all generated, and that's how they started as impact investment. They started as um, investment vehicles for people that often couldn't get financing themselves and grew into sort of institutions. And so you can join a credit union um, and you can also access, they are working on new products. I'll talk about one that was released in a sec. Um, fractional action, oh, uh, fractional equity investing is uh, really another space that it's also called equity crowdfunding. I listed front funder, that is not an impact only um, uh, space, but there are a number of ventures on there and you can invest from in the hundreds of dollars to the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And what's interesting about that is it allows some folks uh, who have a limited amount to invest to participate in certain offers. And again, as the space grows, the goal is to have those, you know, thresholds come down. Um, and then I'll just give another example of the list of community investment cooperatives. I listed this uh, BC Investment Co-op um, sort of site lists a number in BC. They exist all over the country and all over the world, I think. Uh, the idea there is they're usually, uh, they're either themed, sometimes they're renewable energy, uh, but they're often place-based. There's, you know, one on Gabriel Island, for example, and they very direct investments into things that are going to benefit the community that you're usually very visible um, and you're sort of close to what's happening there. And then I'll, I'll touch more on, on uh, so social investment funds I want to talk a bit more about, and that's the space I'm, I've worked in and working in, but really what they are, I mean, we know what mutual funds are. Not, it's not quite the same thing. These are more like venture funds. They're, again, for people who aren't familiar with these, it's really uh, experts and around a certain theme or area are making investments in particular projects or, or ventures uh, in a portfolio uh, on behalf of their investees. But these are generally, um, they're not publicly traded and they're generally um, very specific to certain areas and they all have different qualities. Uh, an example, and so I'll go ahead and give you some more specific examples. Um, 
uh, just one more. Thank you. Um, so there, so just to say with all of those, those are just a fraction of what's out there. It's really meant to, sorry, before I go into the examples, illustrate that um, at this moment in time, some of these are available, but you could, uh, you can probably find an impact investment at almost any level. Uh, and they have been going for many years. Um, and so the goal is now to sort of ramp all that up. So um, an example directly related to COVID and also and to resilience is uh, Van City Unity Term Deposit. So this was launched uh, in March and it was a direct response obviously to the pandemic and the idea was uh, to raise money quickly to help their small business and nonprofit members with different lower interest products and things that could help them through this time. Um, you can see the terms it was very accessible it's already closed but it was available you know widely and it's quite decent terms and rates compared to what's available out there now. Um, that's an example. The next example um, is uh, I give a local example or they're local but they're national we're not sure um, so RISA is started on the Sunshine Coast this is an example more like a venture fund and uh, you're you're gonna need to invest a bit more money in this again these are not finance this is not financial advice um, I noticed my I had some disclaimers there that aren't there but um, the idea being here is again somebody else who's got a lot of experience assessing uh, companies in the community and organizations that are going to provide resilience and be good for the community whether it's a coffee shop uh, salish soils is a great example um, it's an organic soil um, and landscape company and it's also owned by indigenous and it's on indigenous land so there's a whole bunch of impacts there um, you can invest in this fund uh, and they make the selections for you. So this would be more of an angel investor or uh, level, obviously. Um, and the next example I have is, uh, this is, these are, we're going to sort of funds where at some point in the future, we hope, um, well, the goal is that something like the Community Forward Fund uh, that gives loans to nonprofits specifically in social enterprises, um, uh, in particular ones that might have difficulty accessing money to build a property, or sorry, to, build, to create, um, develop a building, or there's multiple things that they might be doing, but it's about delivering their mission um, in their communities. So that's what is assessed and the sort of outcome that's looked at. And this kind of fund has got a, a decent return, it's debt, um, but you need to have quite a lot of money to invest in it. Uh, this is still appropriate for some investors and uh, is something that um, over time, as we have better ways of distributing these types of products, the numbers could come down and I hope that anybody could participate in. Um, and the last example is uh, Raven Capital Partners. So similar kind of thing. Um, venture capital, uh, but it's directly investing in indigenous led um, uh, companies and the companies themselves have would have targets around sustainability and that kind of thing as well. So those are four, those are so sort of a mouthful, but I'm trying to create some kind of a bit, a bit more um, understanding of what these kinds of impact investments look like. This is just four of, you know, that list, that first list is, is not exhaustive. There are many more things on the list. This is just four as part of that list to give you an idea. So um, on the next slide, we're talking about why. So I think, obviously I'm, I'm convinced, but uh, I get really excited when I see these products, uh, these, these opportunities to invest. Again, this has to be judged based on your own particular situation. Uh, but I want to own some of this stuff in my portfolio, make, make me feel good. Uh, I'd rather earn money uh, doing those kinds of investments than traditional or only traditional investments. Um, now, why aren't they more mainstream? I think part of it's obvious, even based on this presentation, that, you know, this is still a very, um, it's, it's, a diverse space and it's hard to kind of know what's out there. Um, a 
lot of people don't know these, the, even the things that they could access exist. Uh, once you do know they exist, you know, understanding how that might fit into your portfolio, uh, what's the right amount, that's not that easy um, until you start to get that knowledge. And at the moment, certain investments uh, are not available to certain types of investors. That your investment advisor might not sell these investments. Uh, so at the moment, there's still work to be done, and that's and that's uh, partly some of the work that we'll be doing. I hope, uh, or the plan is through the social finance fund, is um, understanding what those pieces are. Um, over time, as this space builds, you know, this will. Uh, this the barriers will come down. Uh, universities like uh, UVic and Gustafsson School of Business, who are actually trying to educate folks um, and the ecosystem partners and the stakeholders uh, themselves that are in this space, it's quite incredible. I have to say, compared to the traditional financial world, um, the people technically that are competitors in this space or even adjacent nonprofits, funds. Everybody is at the table together because you know they're trying to float all the boats, um, and it's quite it's quite a great uh, thing to see. So I have a lot of confidence um, that this is there's no reason why this isn't going to continue to grow for all of those reasons. But at the moment, there's still some challenges, but they are being overcome. So on uh, the next slide, we talk about. Um, as individuals, again, this is such a fast overview, but you know there are some things you can do now, uh, even though we're not quite there to help us accelerate this. And starting with, talk to your bank, talk to your financial advisors. Um, you know, talk to them twelve times if you have to. If this is something you're really interested in and you can't access it, um, it, it will take. It takes work on their side to educate themselves and be able to get this on their shelf. Uh, to be able to offer it to you. Uh, if you're an angel investor, I know we've got some out there today, um, making impact investments uh, is, is something you can look at. Um, if you're not doing it already, consider really making those choices. And uh, advisors and high net worth folk, advisors, uh, this will become mainstream. So if you're, again, it's a competitive advantage now if you're not doing it. Um, if you are, then good for you. Um, we hope to find ways to help you do more. Uh, so that is, I think, uh, in summary, just I touched on this, but I think we, um, again, I'm, you know, I'm very convinced this is, this is important for many reasons. Um, I think it's obvious why the government also thinks so internationally, the space is growing. We want to have more resilient communities and organizations. Um, the popularity is building and uh, it will become more and more available. And so you can be a part of the solution. Um, and, and I hope you are. So thank you for listening. Uh, I think that covers off all of the material that we had in this part. And we were going to allow time for questions. I hope we have a good amount of time, uh, just 15 minutes left. So thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Don. This is a really great overview of uh, more concrete examples close to home and uh, um, you know opportunities for investing to build resilience in the community. Um, we are ready to take questions. Uh, so if you, I'm gonna just go. It's tricky with um, with Zoom. Sometimes I can't see the Q&A, but I'm going to look at the questions here and see. Um, so I have a question here from uh, uh, Ophelia. Um, what are the risks expected on these impact investments? And how can, can a new impact investor be confident with these portfolios? Great question, because, you know, there's a perception that this is much more riskier than, than other investment opportunities. What are your thoughts on this, uh, Don? Yeah, I'd say uh, definitely some of the ones we presented are, you know, in the higher risk category, but there are others that, that do, you know, if you look at, say, the unity bond or, you know, those are very low risk guaranteed investments. So um, I think it's about 
it, again, it's about understanding your risk portfolio or your risk tolerance first, um, talking to your financial advisor and being able to then compare uh, what's out there against that and how much of your portfolio, if anything, is relevant. So it, it's sort of, unfortunately, it's there's no one answer because the, the products are so varied. Yeah. And if you look at the, what investors are reporting, for example, in the... Um a recent survey that I mentioned earlier where I focused more on what frameworks investors are actually using to uh, set goals and report on these impacts. Uh, there, was, uh, there were some questions on the, the risk return profile and um, the majority of investors say that they actually meet or exceed their return uh, objectives. Remember with investments, it's always there's, a, you know, the higher the risk, the higher the return. Investors usually have a tolerance for risk. Um, if anything, uh, in March, you've seen uh, the big collapse in stock markets, um, you know, even in traditional financial investments, you, there's always an element of risk. Uh, with impact investing, uh, it's the same story. You can have some investments that are higher risk than others. Ultimately, it depends on your risk tolerance, on which one you feel more confident uh, to invest in. Um, another question here. So please, uh, again, we're not taking questions um, directly. Uh, so we ask that you type your questions. Um, where can a startup go for pre-revenue capital? Best options. Um, again, I'd, I'd have some specific questions, which we can't get into, obviously, in this forum about what kind of startup are you a, are, um, are you an outcome based startup where it's very obvious that you're doing something social environmentally um, beneficial, there are, there are venture funds that specifically uh, invest in early stage or seed or early stage, so pre-revenue, so seed stage, I guess. Um, there's also part of, I hope, with the Social Finance Fund, uh, again, foundations are starting to get involved in um, granting like certain small amounts towards, say, business planning or that kind of thing. That's not the same as going for your full round. Um, there are, there are um, groups like Again, I don't know what your business is, but Active Impact is one venture capital firm in Vancouver that invests in different kinds of socially responsible or environmentally friendly businesses. So you just have to, again, it's about asking around, um, you know, there's something called Impact Money Finder. Um, you could check on there. And that's about all I could say without more information. <laughs> Yeah, and, and this is, uh, the, I mean, usually uh, in the pre-revenue uh, stage, comp uh, you, you, you approach angel, you know, investors. Or, sorry, yes, of course you can do angels. Um, uh, the, uh, I mean, part of the reason why we're doing this type of education um, or, you know, knowledge sharing is that um, not everybody is very familiar with the, with the you know, the, the terms used or how we measure the impact and so on. So if you are managing a startup and, uh, uh, and your startup, uh, you know, has some um, measurable um, impact on the environment or on some social aspects of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, that you can... You, you, you would want to actually make that visible to investors because many of them do care about these um, other characteristics of your business in addition to looking at the financial aspects and so on. It also can signal that, you know, your, your business is part of the solution to these big environmental or social problems that are uh, needed to be addressed to actually have a more sustainable economy. So um, I think having this kind of information, trying to understand your business and also uh, highlight those benefits can actually be an advantage in attracting capital. Um, yeah. yeah, good point about the angel investors. It, absolutely. And there are a lot of them that have very particular areas they're interested in. So it's about getting to know the going to events and getting to know who's interested in what. Yeah. So Carol, uh, who asked this question about pre-revenue, she's saying it's Vancouver Island food secure and uh, it's in food security and product development. So yeah, definitely this is uh, uh, an area that uh, I would uh, expect many um, 
investors or fund would be probably interested in uh, because it relates directly to some of the sustainable development goals that we talked about. Um, anything else you want to add, uh, John, on, on this in particular? No, I'm um, sorry, but I'm hesitant to, you know, again, I, I don't know exactly who's investing specifically in that, but there's a lot in, happening in that area. And also through, actually, I'd just say, um, there is there are some government initiatives around sort of that early stage, so pre-seed specifically around food resiliency. Um, I would also talk to um, your credit union. Again, it depends. And the city often gets involved in these kind of things. Again, um, so I think those are all areas that are very much of interest right now and, and very important. Yeah, and I wish you luck. <laughs> Um, next question from Glynn. Hi, Glynn. Uh, so it says, where do I go to find options for investing in climate change mitigation rather than adaptation with amounts in the small thousands to tens of thousands? So basically in the retail space, if there are any, um, any options for investments. Um, yeah. Sorry, I, I'm thinking climate change mitigation. Again, I mean, there are certain um, small thousands to tens of thousands. Uh, I don't know offhand. I would, once again, it would depend on the kind of entity it is. Is this something that's going to be a, a sort of venture capital level, you know, producing big returns? Um, or is this something that more of a, uh, more of a patient capital um, that would require a different kind of investor. So I think that's something you want to get clear on too for the entrepreneurs here is really understanding um, which place you fit uh, within the space and, and what those different types of investors are looking for mm -hmm. so that you don't, um, you don't want to waste your time going to investors that aren't that don't have the right kind of investment mandate for your particular type of fund. So I'm sorry, that's not more specific, but I, I'd say, I don't know exactly who's doing that, but that's what you want to think about is um, those things. So my understanding from the question is if I am an individual investor and I have a little bit of money and I want to, you know, whether for my retirement or for other uh, savings uh, objectives, I want to invest oh. with climate focus. Um, well, again, uh, I mean, when you invest, you either invest in debt or, or equity. So you can, you can, you know, if you want to preserve capital, typically what you can do in these cases is you can invest in bonds or, um, or even like some funds that are, uh, uh, including um, uh, uh, fixed income securities. And that could, for example, for uh, climate change mitigation, it could include uh, some of the green bonds, for instance, because they yeah. are uh, helping companies reduce their emission, which is what mitigation means. Um, mm -hmm. So you are helping companies reduce their emission, adopt new technologies, and you know, uh, reduce their negative impact on the environment. Um, you can also invest in, like uh, Don mentioned, uh, there are some VC funds that uh, uh, would would uh, invest. You know, and you have a portfolio of companies that are, for example, uh, producing clean technology and so on. So um, the, 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 there are various ways. It's really difficult to find the information. And that's why the question, I guess, it's a where do I go? Because, uh, I mean, there are a number of um, websites and so on that you could look for information. But again, the best thing would be to talk with your financial institutions because there's more and more pressure now on uh, mutual funds or you know, financial institution offering savings options. Uh, to to make these kind of opportunities available to their clients. So, um, I mean, there's no supply if there's no demand. So at the least you have to kind of ask the question. And I think Don earlier mentioned, you have to ask 12 times if you, if you, if you need to. So you, you keep asking the question and, you know, many organizations are, um, 
educating their members, whether it's the Responsible Investment Association in Canada or others, they're educating their members, the advisors and, and, and all the people in the, in the value chain, in the capital market, to educate them on, on the existence of these options. And on the other side, companies... Well, sorry, we're going to run out of time. Sorry, I misread that question completely, uh, Glynn. Uh, and yeah, check, you can look for, depending on where you live, um, there are a lot of investment advisors that do already focus on this kind of thing. So if you can do a, I don't know, whether talk to your existing one or do a bit of a search, um, folks are working to directly with clients to build portfolios that would include this kind of thing and they would know what you can access based on your level of investment. Okay. Thank you very much. I think as you said uh, in the interest of time, so um, please feel free to uh, send us questions if you have more questions, but we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, first, let me just thank Don. Thank you very much for sharing all uh, uh, your knowledge about some of the opportunities to invest in your own community and so on. Um, I think there, there are, we will share the slides. There are a bunch of, um, uh, you know, in the summary uh, of the slides, there are some advice for retail investors. Uh, anyone working with the institutional investor level, um, obviously uh, there, are, there are other uh, resources available for uh, engaging in impact investing and that conversation is also happening. We see more foundations, more institutional investors that are trying to um, you know, engage in impact investing and achieve uh, measurable uh, positive impact on society and the environment. We hope that you really enjoyed this session. And before I uh, close, I just want to announce a couple of more uh, webinars uh, next week and the week uh, after. Uh, so on Thursday, I have my colleague Alango who is presenting on a completely different topic, but you might enjoy uh, hearing from him uh, on, uh, on the meaning of work. And then also, um, Steve Tax is having a, a, a webinar on whoever tells the best story wins. And I think this also resonates with investment because a lot of the fund will tell you nice stories, particularly when it comes to impact investing. There are some really nice stories about what this money is actually doing for community, for people and the planet and so on. So um, with that, thank you very much. Um, thank you so much. It here. Thank you very much, Don. Yeah, thank you, Thanks, Thank everyone. Take care.